Yo guys, what's going on? Michael White here, your favorite self-taught developer. And today I got asked a really interesting question. So over in our community discord, I was asked, sorry, here my sticky note by Sid Kim. He asked with the knowledge you have now, how would you start your coding journey over if you were to start again? Now I love this question for a lot of different reasons. I love this question, but if I was to start over with the knowledge that I have now and go back to day one to become a web developer, I would do a lot of things differently. So to give you guys a quick outline of the path that I did take and the things that I did do, I started with the head first HTML and CSS book, moved to the head first JavaScript book, then moved to a Udemy course on responsive web design, and then stumbled across the Odin project. And then once I found the Odin project, it was on like Donkey Kong. I went through the foundations course and then the JavaScript course, and then halfway through the node course when I got a job offer. So that was kind of my path and I got a job in nine months. Now, if I was to rewind all the way back to day one, Minute one, when I was sitting there trying to decide how I was going to learn how to code, the first thing I would do is go to free code camp. I would go to free code camp. I would click on that responsive web design course and I would do that right then and there. That course will show you if this is something you want to do. It'll get you working with HTML and CSS immediately. Like your minute one, you're working with HTML and CSS and you can see if this is something that you would want to invest your time in going forward right? You get to play with it, hands-on experience. Now, I know some of you guys may be surprised that I didn't say start with the Odin project, but there's a good reason for that. The Odin project is slow to get going and it takes a while before you actually write any HTML. I had a friend who recently wanted to learn how to code and he was torn between Python and JavaScript. And I said, Hey dude, you can learn JavaScript the way I did. Let's just go to the Odin project and I'll walk you through everything, right? He went to it. He started going through it. He got to the part where you're in the terminal, setting up your folders and stuff and kind of navigating through the terminal. And he was like, when do I learn how to code? I hate this shit. <laughs> what am I going to tell him that he's wrong? No, it's, you're not coding when you do the first part of the Odin project. It's not the most exciting thing. That's why I think going to free code camp, is just such a head start. You're touching stuff right away. You're learning right away. And most importantly, you know, if this is something you want to do right away and it can save you a lot of time in the end. And if you decide it's something you don't want to do, you're already on a really great resource for learning. So you can pivot to another language like Python by just literally navigating to a different course. So that's where I would start. So once I wrap up the responsive web design course, that's when I would pivot and jump into the Odin project. I would go right over to the Odin project and I would start the foundations course. Now all this backend stuff is going to make a little more sense. Like it's going to make sense why you'd want to use a terminal to navigate folders and create files. We'll make at least a little more sense. And then setting up Git will matter. And then you'll start going into building your own projects. And not only that, but the free code camp responsive web design course is actually part of the curriculum for the Odin project. So you kind of get to skip a big portion of the Odin project at the beginning. And then once you wrap up the foundations course on the Odin project, I'd move immediately into the node portion. Now, once you start the node course and you're working through that, once you hit the react section, like once you start learning react and you get kind of comfortable with react, not fully comfortable because I don't think anybody's fully comfortable with react, but once you're kind of comfortable with react, stop there, take a break and build a portfolio, build a portfolio and use a library, a CSS library like tailwind material UI or bootstrap. I prefer bootstrap. I would use bootstrap and make it responsive, make it good. Put your best projects that you made so far on there. Now this is important for a few reasons. One being that you're essentially ready for a junior dev position. Once you know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you're pretty much golden for a junior dev role, as long as you know them to a decent level. Like the job I got requires me to do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and bootstrap on a daily basis. That's it. I don't even use React. I want to use React. I want to keep learning React, but I don't touch it on a daily basis. So at this point, you're ready for a junior dev job. So very important, stop there, build your portfolio, add a few projects to it. Now, if you want to go one step beyond, Build some side projects that aren't part of any curriculum here. Build stuff, just find something, build it, build a copycat of a website, build something you're passionate about. Just build stuff for your portfolio. Try to put items on your portfolio that have nothing to do with a course. They don't have to be the world's best projects. They don't have to be, you know, like groundbreaking. Just make sure it's something there, something that you built and something that looks good. Once you have that done, go back to the JavaScript course finish out the course. And that's when we're going to move to the next step. This is where you build a project that is significant and meaningful to you. Like build something that other people are going to use that you can put on a domain and put it out there and get it into production. If you build this website, this project, whatever it is, it doesn't have to get like millions of viewers a month or anything. It can get like a couple a month, 
but put it out there, make it look good, as good as you can. And if it's meaningful to you, it'll be something that's fun to work on. That's why I say make sure it's meaningful to you. Throw it out there. Once you have that project up, that's when you put it on your portfolio and that's when you start applying to jobs. And at that point, I wouldn't even move on to Node. I wouldn't move on to a backend. I would just sharpen up the basics. I would keep working on JavaScript. I'd keep building new projects and I would just keep, I'd stay in that front end bubble and just keep grinding in there because I think you have a better chance of getting your first developer job as a front end developer than you do a back end developer. That's personal opinion though. I mean, maybe front end just clicked better with me than back end. Maybe it depends on the person, but that's just my, my personal opinion. But that's how I would do things. And I would also try to find a place where I can share my code. I'd want more people to look at my code and see my projects. If you guys need a place like that, hey, hey, hey my community Discord link's down below. I love looking at your projects. Everybody there is really awesome, really chill. We're always sharing our work. So if you want to have some eyes on your code, feel free to share it there. Also, if you can reach out and find a mentor, man, that goes a long way. Like being able to talk to people about your code really does help you learn and grow and understand things a lot faster. I was too shy personally to like reach out and try to find a mentor. I really wish I would have. I think it would have sped everything along significantly, but I didn't. And here I am. <laughs> so that's what happens. If you guys were able to go back in time to day one, the day you decided to start learning how to code, what would you do differently? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to see what other people would do. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up there. You guys are awesome, by the way. We're at like 420-something subscribers now. Who thought? We're coming up. We're coming up in the world. <laughs> now, I appreciate all you guys. Thank you for the support. The comments have been awesome. You guys in the Discord are awesome. And, um, and yeah, let's all grow together, right? Peace, y'all.